There's so much anticipation, I'm like, who is gonna come? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? It's Sonia here. Thank you so much for joining us on yet another episode of Men Explain. And we just want to say heartfelt thanks for all the support and the views and the comments so far. We're loving it. Keep them coming. Today's episode, we're going to address the all-important question. Can men and women be friends? I'm going to introduce you to my guest of the day that was meant to be a surprise for me, but I guessed it and I called it days ago, Joachim Gomez. It had to be me. Huh? At the it had to be me. Hello, everyone. My name is Joachim Gomez. Um, half a Cancer, half a Leo, INFJ, uh, 33 this year. Single. Single. <laughs> Before anything, I was supposed to be a surprise guest. Yes. But when she was told the topic, yeah. she just went, is it joking? And then, yeah. Well, um, the, the main question of today is, can men and women be friends? I think that is a very relevant topic to us, Joking, because we not only have a radio show together, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're also friends. I mean, believe it or not, we actually do go out together and eat and go to Haiti Lao and whatever it is that we do. So that's the main question we're trying to address today. I feel there should be like a <laughs> disclaimer tag on the YouTube video yeah. saying that it's our personal opinions. This is not like the guidebook or the yeah. advice because how Sonia and I are... Yeah. It could be very different to your friendships that you have with the members of the opposite sex. Yeah, of course. And when it comes to platonic friendships, I mean, I've had my fair share of trying to have platonic friendships, you know, along the past few years. And uh, the, the word is trying. Emphasis the on trying. Word is yeah, trying. Like, yeah, yeah. As you can see, I think you're one of my only like close male friends. Okay, to be very but but to be fair, yeah. to be fair, and this is how I met Sonia yeah. again for like the umpteenth time. <laughs> this story, but no, I'm ready. I, I'm I'm glad for this. We get to go into detail and yeah. share things that we've not necessarily shared before. Yeah. So, 11 years ago, as of 2021, 2010, um, who do I meet at a Halloween party at Butter Factory of all places at Sonia Chu? I was about to go home, tipsy AF, and she taps me on the shoulder and she okay. says in this hoarse, screechy voice, Hey! Where are you going? Inaccurate. Inaccurate. And I object. The moment I turned back, I couldn't see anyone. I had to look down and, oh, there she is. Inaccurate. <laughs> I was on a podium. How could you have not seen? Yeah, anyway. So I said, oh, no, I'm going to go. And she, goes, and she says, no, you stay for a while more. And I thought, okay, you know, a cute girl like her asked you to stay. Just stay lah. I, mean, I don't, you don't, think, go I don't home, recall right? asking you to stay. You did. I you recall you already expressing interest. Not, no. Yes, you did. No, I yes, wasn't. You did. I expressed interest the day after. So the thing is, uh, we had a mutual friend called Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Hello, what's up? And I was like, hey, Rachel, who is this Sonia girl? What's her surname? Oh, Chew. Went to Facebook, search her up. I was buying a Subway sandwich <laughs> while well, DMing her. As FYI, nothing has changed. She still <laughs> queues up to buy Subway sandwiches now. Asking her for her number yeah. on Facebook. And then, I thought let's try to ask her out sometime mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. yeah there, there, there was like an attraction there and we met before my national service which was November 10th of 2010 yeah he's really good at remembering dates and stuff which I'm terrible at we had meat buffet we went to go watch a movie called Due Date, yes. That I keep thinking is knocked up. Yeah. Which would have been a very bad first date movie. And fortunately or unfortunately, my national service was the next day. Mm. And, and, and that was it. The next time I saw her was, I was Bota and we were at Butter Factory of all places again. Mm. And this was before Sonia Chu became Sonia Chu, like, where she shows her face and go in the club really. <laughs> she was outside and I, my stamp already. And she was like, wow, could you use a drink, man? I took the hint, I went in, snuck out two drinks and I gave it to her. Aww. And I think that was, the, that was the last time I saw you before before, before the next you time in, you popped yeah. out of my feet was um, your radio star competition. Yeah, so it was years later. Actually, we kind of just, I don't know what happened. We just faded out or like lost touch or something. But I still saw you like on Facebook and stuff like that. And then when I did the radio star competition, he reached out again and you said some encouraging words. Mm. And uh, the rest is history when we were actually paired up together. So when it comes to our platonic friendship, how would you describe it? You know, I think our friendship has gone through many different phases. I think the friendship that we have now is something so rare because we're able to work together and also function as friends outside of work, which, come on, like, let's face it, it's not that common. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel? You yeah, agree? it's something I treasure. But 
there's a whole there's a whole backstory to explaining this platonic rela- relationship friendship. I think it has to do with respect, right. knowing your place, putting your pride aside, and putting your ego aside mm. to know that at least for me in my case, like hey, you know, Sonia, I I mean we 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 had a opportunity to date a long time ago yeah. didn't happen, but now that we're working together, now that we are close friends, I don't want to break the friendship that we have. So. Yeah, I think as we carry on this conversation, my opinions on the five things I mentioned might come out to play. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the question is, you know, when it comes to platonic friendships, right, there are some people that define it in a way that, oh, platonic friendships only happen when, for example, you're not attracted to the person anymore. Mm. Um, you know, the other person has their own life and is dating someone else. So, do you feel like all friendships between, you know, men and women usually start out with some love interest. Actually, once again, disclaimer, my opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, tiger. for sure, yeah. I, I honestly think it starts with like a bit of attraction. Yeah. It might be a physical attraction, mm. it might be an emotional attraction. Intellectual. Because, because when when I first spoke to Sonia, at least yeah. for me, is I wanna I wanna get her vibe. I wanna yeah. see if we can vibe. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. And, and, and as you mentioned, like, you know, the if for example a platonic friendship happens because the interest in the other person has died mm. or the other person is dating someone yeah see case in point Sonia Chu she's yeah. dating someone else and not say the interest in me has died no, or but what, you but, dated people along the yeah, way of also. course yeah. but it's more or less like I, I respect the friendship that we have now I respect my place I know my place as hey you know I don't think she would date me now given how close we are because she'll be so bored out of her wits <laughs> with me so <laughs> wait, wait, wait. so that means right like mm. do you feel like even though we're close friends we do have some fundamental differences of course right of course that may not work out in a relationship just compare I her feel. locker and my locker and that's excuse the me my difference. locker is very neat now okay I have grown <laughs> It's neat. For a platonic friendship, I feel it's an evolution as well. Mm. If you establish like, hey, I don't see you that way. Mm. I don't see you as a boyfriend. I don't see you as a girlfriend. It's up to the other person. And I'm surprised I'm saying this because when I was younger, I'll go like, like all uh, Tom Hansen from Five Days of Summer. Yeah. I'll feel not good enough. I'll beat myself up. I'm saying, yeah. what does she see like me? Am I like, that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, yeah. But but now I realize the onus is on me to respect the other person's views, mm. to respect the power of this person saying, no, I don't see you that way. Mm. And when I, am I mature enough to establish that in my mind and be friends with this person, or go like, hey, you know what? Maybe I need some time to take a step back to to deplete myself of all attraction for you before I can carry on a friendship. Yeah, fair enough. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, aside from me, you have other female friends as well. Yeah. And how did those friendships sort of start out? Was it all like first straight up, you know, you know, I think we can be buddies. I just like your companionship. Or was it like, oh, she's cool, she's cute, or she was introduced into my group? Actually, my two other close female friends yeah. that I that I have in my life. Um, we met through church mm. and another friend of mine we met through partying at Zoo. Mm. Wow, mean, two very different things. Usually uh, the party, <laughs> party no, no, on no. Saturday night but, then the church on Sunday. But but thankfully my <laughs> church group and, and this one other female friend of mine has have, have uh, merged together okay. and we all go out partying this and that. I think there's that, there's that respect and the acknowledgement like, mm. hey, we're friends, you know, we vibe well, we party well, why ruin something by bringing in emotions? That's true. But, but of course, yes, I, I do have female friends where I have massive feelings for. Yeah. And when he when she told me, Oh, I don't see you that way, or mm. you know what, Joe, I don't I think we're better off as friends. Yeah. Sure. Um, you know what? Give me a while. Let me like, as I as I said earlier, deplete all sort of attraction and emotion for you before I can take the next step with you. Because mm. I wanna respect your view of me and I hope to earn your respect as well. Mm. So this is your your direction when you hit into a friendship with a girl, yeah. I would say, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then when it comes to I guess after you get rid of all of your feelings, like your romantic feelings and stuff like that, do you think things would have changed? In terms of the vibe, you know what I mean? Because initially it's like, oh, like I really like you so much. And then after we establish that, can we really be friends? My, my thought is how you communicate on text, how you communicate in person. Yeah. You know that courting or that flirting yeah, phase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When, when you become friends, I think that's all over. Yeah. Or you can say in jest and you better, you better be in jest and not like with the hopes of trying to change her mind or his mind. Yeah. So the communication wise might be a lot more reserved mm. without like putting in your true emotions but if you're holding on to that that, that hope of pursuing a relationship mm. with someone as under the guise of a friendship 
then I think it's your fault. Yeah. It's it's that person's fault. You've got to take responsibility for exactly. that in a way as well. Yeah. So um, I just want to refer to some research that was done back in 2012 at the moment. Men and women view this very differently in their experiences, their opposite sex friendship and all that. The results show that men are more likely to find their female friends attractive versus girls finding their male friends attractive. So, do you agree with the results and what are your thoughts on that? Wow. Yeah, there, there is an agreement. There is an agreement to it because, and this is where I tell stories about my own relationships. Like, I've been in so many, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and some of, some of, I know, I know, stop it. <laughs> and, 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 some of, and some of these girls, they do have guy best friends. Yeah. How do you feel about that personally? I have my reservations about it. But mm. then again, I, I'm very thankful Jeremy yeah. trusts me as like one of your good friends in life and, yeah. your, and your radio colleague. He's making a cameo yet again. Hello, Jeremy. <laughs> um, but for the other, for the girls I've dated, they're guy best friends. I, mm. as a man, you know, as a man, I feel like I know how a man thinks. Mm. I, I know what a man is up to. And, and unfortunately, and this always happens, whenever the guy best friends senses weakness in our relationship, oh, okay. they will pounce. Oh, they no. are on it. They will write confession letters saying that, oh, I've always liked you for the longest time. So you see, do platonic friendships exist? And and unfortunately, because because my my um like the girls that I've dated, yeah. they are so close to this guy mm. or so close to this circle of friends where they find it tough to yeah. go like, hey, you know, I'm seeing someone, you can't do that. you got to respect that. Because yeah. it might affect the entire circle of friends yeah. and, and there might be awkward feelings for the girl and the guy now. So I wonder what happens. I wonder how did they get out of that. So then, if you don't mind sharing, how did that end? Oh, you? it got very confusing. Some of the girls couldn't couldn't bear to break the guy best friend's right, heart. Right. And yeah, I ended up being the, the, the victim of this where they said, Hey Joe, you know, can we take some time off? Like, why do you why do you take some time off? Like he's just your guy best friend. Unless unless there were there was also that sense of curiosity. Like, yeah. actually, yeah, what what would have happened if I date him, given how we're all good friends already? Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's the thing, you know, through school and all that, I've witnessed and I've seen groups of friends, they've all all dated each other and they continue to be friends after that. I- I'm not quite sure how I feel about As that. As in, they've, they've broken up but they're still friends. Yeah, they're still friends in the same group and then my ex starts to date this other girl in the same group who is the ex of my other friend. Oh, and wow. we're all in the same social circle. So no such thing as a bro code or a cis code. No! Huh? <laughs> uh, but I was going to say, all, all's fair in love and war. Yeah. yeah. I-, I guess. And the the saying of it takes two hands to clap yeah. really, really comes into play here. But have your views on platonic friendships and relationships changed over the years? Um, or has it always remained the same? Or do you feel like you've matured and grown in a way where, you know what, I think I can accept if my future girlfriend has a male best friend and I'm able to iron out the issues with him? I think I need to, and this is my own insecurity speaking, if yeah. I know that my female, my, my partner has a has a male best friend, I would like to meet that male best friend. Mm. I would like to establish this form of unspoken like, hey, I respect you as the male best friend. You don't cross the boundary. Yeah. If she has an issue, if she has a problem, I would like to be the presence there for her. Mm. You know, if she needs a comfort shoulder to cry on, you might you might think it's me being immature or me being possessive, but if she needs a comfort shoulder to cry on, I, I feel that I should be the number one priority she turns to. If not, why why have me as a partner? Just take your guy best friend. You true, know what true. I mean? So, so yeah, and, and for the guy's best friend, like, if there's a weakness in our relationship, if it's rocky or what, I, I don't wish for you to become the comfort dick to cry on. I, I feel we sh- you should allow us to establish communication on how to better our relationship first. Then you can maybe step in and ask her how's it going. But unless, of course, if if my my girlfriend approaches the guy best friend, yeah. and I'm having problem, then I can't say anything because yeah. my, my 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 girlfriend made the first move. Yeah. yeah. So then now I have a, a question that you can answer very honestly, and I will also answer very honestly on oh, my shit. part. Okay. <laughs> the question is: Have you ever dated a girl that had a problem with me? Yes, I have. Oh, the silence was deafening for I like have, two seconds. Really? Have, oh my I god, have. tell me more. I've I never have. asked him this question before, by the way. So you guys are getting first dips yeah, on um, this answer. Yeah, it's exclusive to this podcast. <laughs> so well done, so meet you. So this was, this was 2014, 2015, 2016. Mm. And initially for Sonia and I at work, from January to April 2014, it was both of us ironing out our different working styles. Yeah. I, I feel that the arguments we so were supposed to have as a radio duo, as a showbiz duo, we had it very early on in the career. Which is good. And ever since then, I think Sonia and I 
we had mutual respect for each other as people and as colleagues. Yeah. And we got very close. And the closer we are as people, it reflects on the show and it got a lot better. We did a lot of YouTube videos together. We did interviews together. Whenever I post a picture with her on, on, on Instagram, it's one of mutual mutual respect and love. I, I love this girl very much ever since April 2014. Ever since. Yeah, ever, ever <laughs> since. Because the, the fights were quite like, whoa, yeah, like, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. you know? And there were, there were people that I was seeing at that point. Yeah. They got sick and tired of their friends asking them, Hey, so Sonia and Joachim dating? Huh? Oh my gosh, hey, really? Hey, hey, they confirm slept together one. Lah, no? They confirm. You co- <laughs> By guys, the way, the, the answer is, is no. no. <laughs> like, I tell you, man, you go on Hardware Zone, for people thinking that we slept together, oh if I had a gosh. dollar for every comment, we'll, we'll be, be rich. Yeah, we'll be we rich, can quit yeah. already. Yeah. And so they, they approached me saying, hey, actually, uh, Joe, I'm, I'm quite uncomfortable with the closest you have with Sonia. Oh, no. You know, why, why, do you, why, why do you portray as if you are together when you're not? I say, we are not. It, we, we clearly state on all the comments that come yeah. in saying I ship I ship yeah, I, know, I was I saying that. the ship has sailed you know a long time ago yeah the ship sank <laughs> <laughs> shipwrecked <laughs> oh goodness me so so yeah but the strange thing is the girls who told me they were uncomfortable with you being my good female yeah. friend they had guy best friends of their own <laughs> They had guy best friends of their own and huh. they would openly, you know, sleep on their shoulder. Is it? During a Christmas gathering, you fall asleep on the lap of the guy. What? And I'm like, what's okay. going on? Like, and, and back then, I blamed myself a lot. I said, oh, maybe maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not trying hard enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing a good job. But upon further reflection, I went, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, but yeah, I'm not perfect too. I, I have yeah, my own yeah, flaws yeah, as well. So yeah, I have It just dated, seemed hypocritical at the time. Yeah, I, I have dated people who are uncomfortable like, hey, you and Sonia yeah. really just friends. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I get that question a lot. So yeah. So I mean, since you shared, I'll share as well. Come on, your answer has to be no. Really? Joaquim Gomez, a threat to whoever it is you're dating? Actually, you're um, kidding. someone that I dated had a problem. <laughs> I think I know who. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for this particular guy, I mean, we're on good terms, by the way. We're on good terms. Mm. Uh, we ac- we are actually friends, haha. Platonic friendships okay. after a break. Maybe that could be a you know a topic for another episode. Can you be friends with your ex? <laughs> you invite him here, and you can have a chat with him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I think in certain arguments, he did actually raise it up. He was mm. like, "You always talk about Joakim. Uh, you know, you, you guys Aww. together is it? You always, you know." And in certain arguments, when you know everything's swept under the carpet, and then everything just blows up, right? yeah, yeah, in a yeah, big yeah, confrontation. Yeah. It was those moments that he brought up the issue of Jokim and I being too close as partners. The conclusion for me through that experience was yeah. that I really need like a self-assured, confident partner. Um, yeah, I understand. Person that I'm dating because our work is quite, I would say, unusual to a lot of people who are not in this line, first of all. Mm-hmm. And, you know, who do maybe office jobs, they don't have a partner, right? Mm-hmm. Like to, mm-hmm. to have to have chemistry with and bounce off with every day. So it really takes a self-assured, confident man to be able to understand our work, to respect that and to be like, you know what, I'm not going to feel insecure just because we're always joking and laughing and we seem to finish each other's sentences all the time yeah. yeah but do you think at the end of the day right that it's useful and helpful to have female best friends for perspective for I don't know the different type of emotional support for or, sure because I, guys and girls we have very different dynamics you know I can see like when bros hang out with each other versus girls hang out with each other yeah. and then when you come together there's a balance yeah. so what do, you, what do you think it's very good to have a, mem- a best friend a member of the opposite sex yeah. because the amount of time she has helped me understand a female's perspective and the amount of times that I have helped her understand a male's perspective true yeah those rare times like what they say um <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel it's a good idea, but you need to be ready for this. Right. You you need to tell yourself, we're just friends, I respect her, we, we have love for each other, not in that romantic way, but in that in that way where we both of us are mutual mutually friends yeah. and we understand that it won't evolve into anything more than that. I hosted a wedding last year. Oh yeah. Where the groom's best man, best man yeah. was a woman. 
best oh, woman. Oh, nice. And, and I even, I, and, I, and I remember, I recall the best woman's speech. Yeah. She said like, you know, initially when, when I first met uh, his then girlfriend, yeah, yeah, now fiance yeah. and now wife, right? I mean, of course, we were a bit uncomfortable, mm. but once the trust was established, yes. it was perfectly fine already. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is, this is something respectable. That's great. That's very progressive as well. Mm-hmm. And I think people don't talk about this enough because it is the topic of a lot of fights, I feel, between couples and, you know, between friends even. Friendships fall apart, groups of friends, you know, get into arguments because of certain things like that. To be honest, I feel the fights happen yeah. because perhaps one of the parties could have been a victim of being cheated on yeah. or the guy or the girl best friend tries to potong jalan because mm. my insecurity stemmed from that. Mm. And it, it took me a while to really accept the notion of a guy best friend. So do you think that men and women can be friends? I'm going to answer this like a history student. Yes, yes. to a limited <laughs> extent. I feel like a broken record. It really boils down to a lot of important factors. Yeah. Can you put your ego aside? Can you put your pride aside? Can you establish respect with each other? Mm. I think these three, it's like a triangle. You've got to ask yourself that. If not, you might not be ready. That's my opinion. What about yours? So in Comments. other words, yeah, yeah, leave a comment. But in other words, it's not a simple black or white answer. Mm-hmm. There, there are some conditions there. Like, yes, but we have to make a certain effort to reassure mm-hmm. our partners so mm-hmm. and so forth. The last question that I have is, my lovely producers decided to just put us in an awkward position. Okay. And the question is, what is one thing we love about each other? Well, this might go on for another hour. Is now. it? Oh, oh, I'm ready for it. Oh, one I'm thing. Ready. One give me 10. It's okay. I can give you 10 actually. <laughs> no, no, just give me one. Just give me one. It's two. Wow. How do I just break down Sonia Chu into one adjective or noun? Just keep it simple. Lah. I know it's very hard to summarize how many things we love about each other. What I love about Sonia is her drive to be the best in what she does. Oh, yeah. thank you. It's not one of those like, oh, it's a mirror where I see that in me right, as well. Right. But I, I'm that kind of person. Whatever chance that comes to me, I want to make sure I'm driven enough to be the best at what I do. When, when I'm with her, we have the same mindset of, hey, you know what? We've got a radio show or we're hosting this gig together. We're hosting NDP together. Let's, let, let's just give it our best shot. Kick ass create an impact and then we celebrate the victory and then go back into working hard again. And I think that's that's the one thing I love about her and that's a, a core factor that brings us closer together as colleagues and as friends. Yeah, the very nicely said. Thank you, mm. thank you. Oh, I'll pass you 50 bucks later. No need. So, some free of charge. I'll give you for free. <laughs> free of charge, okay. Well, similarly, I think you put it excellent. You put it very, very well. But similarly, I think the one thing that I want to add on to that as well, aside from, you know, the similar drive that we have and the hard work that we put in and all, um, you're somebody that doesn't give up easily. Uh? And I really think that that is a good quality as well. Because to me, sometimes, when I keep doing a certain thing and it doesn't work out, I'm like... Mm. Feel lah, forget it lah, you know. Like, I just want to like, toss it away or give up or whatever. But this guy doesn't really give up. If you only give him another few minutes to tell you about the stories about how he got here, yeah, yeah, how you yeah. managed to cling on to those opportunities, really grab it, you know, by the horns and stuff like that. I think that's one thing that is a really good quality. And in regards to relationships, um, you know, the kindness that he has and the amount of care he has and he shows for his other partner is something that, you know, you should really consider if Stop you're it. single <laughs> and already <laughs> To mingle. We're going to check a lot of uh, <laughs> negative comments now. I'm just saying, okay, uh, but one thing though, the whole like learning to never give up kind of thing, yeah. um, it's gotten to a point in my life now where pick your battles wisely. Mm-hmm. Because if you're going to fight for everything and not give up, it's, you're going to get very drained, man. Yeah, I kid yeah. you not. Yeah, but you know, we admire the determination and, and the strength as well. So I think that's what uh, really makes us work as friends in a way. There's some chemistry there. Thanks for joining me today. Mm-hmm. Um, this has felt like an extended radio program for it me, has, actually. And I think uh, we're going to leave this studio being closer now after this revelation. Really? Closer lah! Like, I mean, look, you, you, you don't feel like we learned something new about each other today, man. Basket. <laughs> <laughs>If you enjoyed the video as well, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel. And why not leave a comment below telling us whether you agree or disagree and suggest the next topic for our darling Sonia Chu. In the meantime, it's time to say bye. So G to the O-O-D-B-Y-E. Phone dropping. Goodbye. Goodbye.